Hey guys, so today uh, I'm going to be talking about one of my favourite films, probably my favourite film from last year, uh, that being Bones and All, directed by Luca Guadagnino. Uh, Bones and All is a story about a young girl named Marin, um, who is played incredibly by Taylor Russell, uh, and it's about her, as she discovers she has like a, I don't know how to put this, a unique, um, like, hunger hunger for human flesh she's a cannibal basically um and it follows her as she travels across america and meets all kinds of different people along the way some of them being creepy old men like sully played by mark rylance or a drifter played by timothy chalamet called lee over the course of the film she travels across america and uh she sparks up this romance with timothy chalamet timothy chalamet's character and yeah it's that that that's basically a brief overview of the plot but now I'll I'll get on to why I think this film is I think this film is perfect I genuinely cannot see anything wrong with it I watched it one day and then the day after I watched it again it's just so good I've got the book almost finished the book I love it so much I think maybe the best aspect about how this film, about why it's so good, is how Luca Guadagnino is able to blend like polar opposite genres. I'm doing media studies and film studies in college, my first year of college. Um, one of the one of the topics we learned in media studies and film studies was genre hybrids, which is sort of like when you mix two genres together to attract two different audiences and obviously get more profit. But I feel like horror and romance is one of maybe if not the hardest genre hybrid to do the only other one i can think of is like a musical action film and genre horror is very very hard to do because you need to be able to balance like the sort of horror aspects and the gruesome aspects and the actual like romantic aspects and i think bones and all does it does it perfectly the way it's able to have like the most disgusting brutal killing because they're cannibals on screen and then you have in maybe the next scene have Marin and Lee being like all cute and romantic and it doesn't feel jarring it doesn't take you out of the experience and the way it's able to do that I think is crazy it doesn't it doesn't once feel unnatural or weird Uh, and I think this is just all due to the amazing writing I think every every actor in this film is just outstanding Taylor Russell uh, is pretty much I think in every single scene obviously the film centers around her but I don't think there's a single scene where she's not in she's not in it uh, she stole the show in waves the 2019 film which is I think may, maybe it might be my favorite th- film the second act of wave just destroys me every time I watch it tears everywhere she's amazing in waves uh, she's also amazing in this I think this is like a, one of one of her first big films and that's that's mental i think timothy chalamet is once again able to show his diverse range of acting talents his physical performance uh, and mannerisms are they're like so animal like and unnerving he like twitches at some points and it's it's so chilling yet he's so friendly and caring towards merrin and it's just it's i don't know it's crazy uh, lastly, Mark Rylance. There's not really much to say about him, apart from the fact he's just absolutely terrifying and anxiety-inducing in every single scene he's in. Uh, he's just a creepy old man. Don't really know what's wrong with him. He's just very, very creepy. Bosnall also looks incredible. The cinematography is gorgeous. The American landscape is captured so well in these lovely long shots that we get and slow camera movement. It just looks very appetizing almost some of the cinematography is also very metaphorical and impactful much like call me by your name my favorite scene in this film is one where i'm not going to spoil it uh, because i need you guys to watch this it's one where marin and lee have like a altercation let's put it with somebody inside a house and inside the house the most brutal disgusting let's put it as a crime is happening and there's loads of noise and like static and this is all to do with Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross's score which is also amazing I'll get onto this later but static is very noisy and like your ears are pounding and then it cuts to outside and it's just silent and it's just peaceful and there's nothing happening and I feel like this is really metaphorical and it links to like one the thing that gets said earlier in the film 
okay, I'll, I'll give a spoiler warning now. I'll put on the screen when to skip to. There's a character called, character called Jake who's like a, I don't know how to explain it, like a, like a hobo. He's also a cannibal and he's played by Mark, Michael Stahlberg, I think his name is. Um, and he says to Lee, You look like the kind that's convinced himself he's got this under his thumb. But you pull on one little thread. <sighs> And I feel like that links to this scene I'm talking about, where these two characters look like they have everything in control, and then as soon as one thing goes wrong, everything goes wrong. And it also, too, links to the expression, not waving but drowning. One of my favourite artists, Lil Kana, um, has done an album called Not Waving But Drowning, which is based on a poem. I'm not sure who the poet is, but it's sort of like a saying about somebody who, like Jake said, somebody who's putting on a brave face who looks like they're okay but then inside they're really getting destroyed they're they're sad they might be completely different inside and i feel like that that's very powerful colors are also a huge part of this film and having learned about this thing called semiotics in media studies which is like a theory that everything is a sign for something else in any aspect of media and watching it on a second time, when I was able to actually like analyse things rather than just uh, letting the story soak me in, I was able to catch like a lot more meaning. There's a scene that stood out to me which takes place in a phone booth, and it has Lee, played by Timothy Chalamet, who's talking to his sister in the phone booth. Uh, and there's red and blue neon light shining over him, drowning him in colour. Using semiotics, the colour of red you could often analyse as associating with anger and violence and the color blue could connote something like calmness and friendliness and i think these are these are lee's like two sides and i think luca guadagnino sums it up perfectly lee also has red hair which i think could connote that the anger and violence side of lee is sort of overpowering the calmness and the friendliness of him and i think that's that's a very it's a very cool detail I don't know if it was meant to be, but that's what I took from it. I also noticed the fact that whenever the characters, uh, they call it feed, basically when they ever, whenever they eat a human, they're, they're displayed with the human's blood drenched on white clothes. It's mostly white clothes or, for example, Lee's like pale uh, white body. And this could just be me, but it almost says something. The color white, using semiotics again, often connotes like purity and something good uh, or heavenly or angel-like and then by covering it in blood and this violent crime that these people have just committed after they've brutally eaten people uh, I think it's just like a very clever filmmaking move. The characters are also rich and intriguing. I love Meron questioning the nature of what her and Lee are doing throughout and whether it's right or wrong. Finally coming to the realisation, spoiler alert, that they can't really do anything about it. Uh, they have to. They have to feed. I think Lee's character is super interesting, mostly his style and how he appropriates like a, a certain aspect or a piece of clothing from each of his victims. Like his his sense of style is very cool. It is, it's very disjointed and it doesn't really make sense and that's because it's all just like a jumbled piece together collage of all the people he's killed. Lastly, I would like to mention the score and the soundtrack of this film, filled with excellent 80s songs. It's awesome. It's just like a, it's almost like a, a violent uh, John Hughes film almost. And the actual score uh, by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross is so haunting yet beautiful. The last song that it plays is just, it will make you, it will destroy you, it will make you so upset. And I want to listen, I want to add it to my Spotify playlist, but it's so sad, I don't want to. And I want to listen to it again, but then again, I don't. It's, it's, it's amazing. I, I don't know how they do it, how they do every, every soundtrack. I think they did the soundtrack for Waves as well, which is amazing. Again, they just make every single soundtrack so great. And I don't know how they do it. They're just incredibly talented people. I think this film is a work of art. I really can't get over how good it is. It's severely underrated. Most people I see are giving it like average rating. I'm giving it a five. I could write and speak so much about why I love this film and why I think it's perfect, but I feel like I'd just be here forever. There's so much you can list. 
and I adore everything about this film. I just think it's perfect. So yeah guys, make sure to go watch Bones and All, uh, leave in the comments what you think about it. I really hope you like it as much as I did. I'll see you in the next film analysis I do.